Greetings and welcome to the Transform Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher Anastasio. Today is Thursday, November 3rd, 2022, and this is episode 97. So uh, creeping up on that century mark, guys. Uh, Super, super excited about it to have you guys part of the podcast for this long, which started all the way back in October 2021. Uh, So we at Transform, super, super stoked to have you guys uh, come along for the ride with us as we approach the 100th episode, uh, which should be publishing here later on in the month. Um, Obviously today, episode 97, uh, wanted to talk to you guys a little bit more about YouTube Shorts, get a little tactical about that uh, with you today. Uh, One plug I wanted to put in for you guys, uh, which we did mention back in early October, uh, did an episode about this. Um, Elements of our team uh, for Transform in Asia will be over here uh, this month here within the next several days. Uh, got a conference in Phoenix, November 8th and 9th, uh, that we'll have a couple members from the team at that conference. I believe it's the Converge Conference uh, for CPAs. Uh, and then November 16, 17, 18, uh, Mass CPA up in uh, Connecticut, have another conference coming up there uh, uh, where, where the Transform team will be present for you guys uh, to meet. I mean, obviously, if you're in that industry and you happen to be at any one of these events, it's a pretty narrow audience that I'm speaking to right now. But if you do happen to be in that sector and you happen to be going to one of those conferences, we'd love to meet you. So I, I just want to throw that out there for you guys before we dove in today um, and kind of get that out of the way. So let, let's talk for a second about YouTube Shorts, guys. I've talked about this uh, over the last couple months. This was something I was really listening intently to uh, from Gary Vaynerchuk when he talked about the shift in Team Gary V's strategy uh, for which social media platforms they concentrate on for pumping out his content. And I believe I came across this, I mean, you have to check back in the episode list, but I think this was something that cropped up in like late August, early September, if I remember correctly. But I remember distinctly Gary going through the reconfiguration of the different platforms and media uh, 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 avenues that his team was now focused on. And they had really kind of demoted Instagram. That was kind of the first key point. But they'd really shifted focus across three distinct areas. Facebook Watch, you know, pumping video out onto Facebook, um, TikTok, and YouTube Shorts. And when Gary talked about YouTube Shorts, he correctly noted that YouTube is the second largest search engine. YouTube Shorts, of course, is along with the trend of short video and so forth. Uh, it also happens, I'm not, I'm not sure Gary even mentioned this now that I think about it, but it also happens to be that YouTube is the best uh, monetizing platform out there. So if you were thinking that your content could get monetized at some point, you definitely want to think YouTube first before Instagram or uh, TikTok. But that's more of an aside. From Gary's standpoint, he was talking about organic reach. He was talking about how to get to people in greater numbers without having to pay for it. And so Facebook Watch, uh, TikTok, and uh, YouTube Shorts were the three that he focused on in this talk. Now, the really interesting thing here, guys, is you know, when Gary talks about how YouTube is the second largest search engine, obviously next to Google, which owns YouTube, there is sort of a whole ecosystem going on there that you guys could take advantage of in and of itself. And let me explain what I mean by that. Here's the tactic. If you have the time for it, I'll, cl- I'll clarify that in a second, and you're prone to making videos, it's very hard to explain why you wouldn't start your own YouTube channel. Now, let me, let me do a couple of caveats here. YouTube is very hard to break through organically. Uh, people have been putting up YouTube content since 2005. There's more than likely some very established channels in your area, in your industry, whatever that industry is, by now, meaning you have heavy competition to get seen. That doesn't mean you can't get seen, it just means you're gonna have a little bit of a headwind going in. But if you can go ahead and commit to video, commit to consistency, that's what I meant a moment ago when I said, you know, if you have the time, where you're consistently putting up content, not like, you know, two videos this month, 12 videos next month, zero videos until mid-2023. I mean, every month you are creating content on a daily, if not weekly basis, and putting it up on YouTube, if you can commit to that, and if you are comfortable on video or you're willing to get comfortable on video, you don't have to be comfortable on day one, but if you're willing to get there, then it's hard to say why you wouldn't start your own YouTube channel. When you start a YouTube channel, you have raw video that you're gonna have on hand. That raw video can be used on many other platforms in the meantime while you're building that YouTube channel, 
okay? So you've committed to the YouTube channel, you're building a YouTube channel, you're making video for your YouTube channel, but you're also using the videos to do other social media strategies that you may have uh, contemplated. But all the while, each brick is being placed to build that YouTube channel, basically your own television show, right? So here's where YouTube Shorts comes in. So inside this, this contained ecosystem, YouTube has created a mechanism where you can sort of gain more attention, get more eyeballs on you and your content, and then drive them straight over to your YouTube videos. And that's called YouTube Shorts. So what I mean by this is, when you create a YouTube short, you're absolutely gonna get more eyeballs on it initially than any YouTube video you make. And a client that, uh, that we've engaged with presently, you know, they're, they're early on in their YouTube channel development. They've got maybe you know, handfuls of views here and there on YouTube videos. But their YouTube shorts are registering in the hundreds. You know, 200 views here, 250 views there, 300 views there. So essentially they're getting two to 300 times the viewership on the YouTube shorts. Now over time, the strategy is that as the YouTube shorts continue to circulate and gain attention, the traffic will drive over to the YouTube channel. So in other words, when somebody's going through their shorts feed, they see your YouTube short, they like what they see, and they say, oh, let me go check out their channel. Like this YouTube short caught my attention. In one minute, it delivered a message that resonated with me, that was interesting to me. I might as well go check out the YouTube channel, the full channel, and see if there's anything there for me. And this is all happening on the same platform. They're not going anywhere. They're not like, oh, let me close my Facebook app and open my YouTube app. Or let me close my TikTok app and open my YouTube app. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, so there's no friction other than switching the feed from shorts to the regular YouTube feed, okay? So this really creates a situation, guys, where you can um, almost like self-promote all within the same ecosystem. It's not like, oh, I'm putting Twitter content out and trying to drive traffic over to YouTube, or I'm putting TikTok videos up and hoping people go to my profile and click the YouTube link. I mean, obviously TikTok has been you know, very generous in creating, you know, you know, in-profile links that go out to other platforms. That's not common, okay? So yes, inside your TikTok profile, where you're creating snack size content, you could put your YouTube channel and hope that you can send people over, but you have to hope they come over to the profile, you have to hope they take the time to click on the YouTube app, I mean the YouTube icon, you have to hope that they're willing to leave TikTok. You know, if they're in a TikTok consumption mode, they're probably not gonna leave, even if they like your TikTok video. They're not gonna be like, well, I was happily scrolling through TikTok videos and you know, Chris's video caught my attention, so now I'm leaving and I'm gonna go watch a 15 minute video on YouTube. I mean, it's just one or two steps less likely to happen than if you are already dealing with somebody inside YouTube. So that's why the YouTube short still has a distinct advantage, in my opinion, over a great TikTok video. And don't get me wrong, guys, if you're making great short videos, you know, less than a minute, you know, that could carry over to YouTube Shorts. I mean, if you go over a minute, they can't. But if you're, if you're doing that already, that, that's great. I don't want to discourage that. I don't want to say, oh, don't make your TikTok videos, you know, just go make YouTube Shorts. I mean, in Gary Vee's talk, you know, he discussed YouTube Shorts and TikTok being a focal point for his team. So he himself named both of those strategies as, you know, viable ones that he subscribes to. But my point is, if you're committed to building a YouTube channel, commit to making the shorts, and the shorts will benefit your YouTube channel. It'll probably take some time, it'll take some tweaking, it'll take some experimenting, but you're literally going to be self-contained inside this bubble of YouTube, and you're gonna hook people and get their attention with the shorts, which are gonna get more reach for you because YouTube has prioritized them because they're at war with TikTok, and then you're gonna pull those people over to your uh, YouTube channel, okay? And you're gonna drive traffic in, sort of like in, in profile, whatever you wanna call it, in app, in platform, <laughs> okay? You're gonna drive the traffic laterally from your shorts to your YouTube videos, okay? You know, and, and I, think, I think there's so much value to doing that, guys. I think, you know, pulling people over to your videos where you can put in very long, 
caption, you know, very long descriptions. Uh, you know, you, you, you can uh, time stamp those descriptions. Hey, at the, at the minute mark, you're going to learn this. At the two and a half minute mark, you're going to learn this. At the four minute mark, you're going to learn this. You know, you can create so much depth and so much texture to your content and your videos in your YouTube, your normal YouTube feed. And you can just start angling everything over from shorts. I mean, you can take a 10 minute YouTube video you made on three or four topics and make a bunch of shorts about them. Make three, four, five, six, seven shorts about them and just hit it from different angles. Like, hey, do you guys wanna learn how to fill out your 1040? Hey, have you filled out your 1040 yet? Hey, did you know about these new changes on the, on the form 1040 tax form? Same thing, you're, you're talking about 1040s, but you're talking about those 1040 forms from different angles, different perspectives, and you're hooking people from different angles and perspectives that could all then be interested in your video on how to fill out a 1040 because you've sort of grouped everybody together into, into that, that broader category of relevance. Okay, so just one idea there on how you can position your shorts and how you can pump them out with a, with a, with a, a good degree of volume to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. So, you know, in terms of your YouTube channel. So I would leave it here, guys. I mean, this is something we're gonna talk a lot more about because I think there's so much that can be done here. I think, you know, focusing on YouTube uh, is, is, is an area that, that I personally want to kind of make sure this podcast is covering. I think we've done a little bit of it in the first 97 episodes, but not maybe as much as we could have. So look for YouTube to be a bigger topic. Look for various nooks and crannies of YouTube to be a topic, very specific tactical level stuff. And then look for YouTube shorts to be a topic here in a, in a growing sense. Because right now, if you put a, a proverbial weapon to my head and said, you have to pick one of the three platforms, TikTok, YouTube, or uh, Instagram. Well, first of all, take Instagram right off the top. Take that away because of what's going on with Meta and the whole situation there. Um, you know, I just, I just sort of knee jerk would demote Instagram to the number three position. I'd have to move TikTok to number two if for no other reason than there's talk of it being banned in the United States. Okay, so if we're talking from a U.S. perspective, there's issues there. Okay, but ultimately, I feel like YouTube gets the top billing because of these very unique things that nobody else can say. YouTube is the number two search engine. YouTube is the biggest uh, creator monetizer because of its, its heft, its size, its gargantuan bank accounts, okay? So, you know, and, and then the fact that you can pair the shorts with a longer channel-like approach. Now, I mean, are there things on TikTok that could challenge that? Like, if you, if you, let's say you're prone to going live on TikTok or you're able to make 10-minute videos on TikTok. Yeah, there might be exceptions there where you can create your own little ecosystem within TikTok. But right now, this moment in time, if you say, Chris, I only want to make short form content for one platform, which one are you going to choose? I'm going to tell you YouTube Shorts first. I'm going to make TikTok a close second. I'm going to make Instagram Reels a distant third. Okay, now fortunes can change. So I'm not going to sit here and write off Instagram Reels forever. If like the only platform you're, you've got a presence on is Instagram, then yeah, maybe Reels makes sense for you. But I think for most people who have sort of a broader, more neutral you know, perspective going in, I would say YouTube Shorts is number one. So, I'm gonna wrap it up here, guys. Think about what I talked about on this on this podcast. Say, think about how you can work with YouTube Shorts and make some things happen there. Uh, you know, do, do do the cross promotion with your YouTube channel. Uh, if you haven't started a YouTube channel, obviously, like I said, we're gonna address that more here. Talk about why that might be the case and why you might need to fix that. Uh, but anyway, in the meantime, guys, um, this is probably gonna be our only episode coming out this week. Uh, we may be doing one a week up until the 100th. We'll see what happens. We'll keep you guys posted on that. But uh, if we do drop again this week, it probably will be Saturday. Uh, but for now, as we wrap up this Thursday, hope everybody had a great week. Hope everybody has a nice weekend planned ahead. Uh, but thank you for joining episode 97 today. And we will be seeing or talking to you guys again soon. Follow us on Facebook and LinkedIn under Transform. Check out the website, transform.com, And follow and like and subscribe to our podcast. Thank you so much, guys. Hope you guys have a great Thursday evening, and we will talk to you guys again soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.